Well, welcome everyone as we're just kind of waiting to get started here. Uh, I'll say we're excited to have you day two of Viticon um, and excited to uh, welcome everybody in. I know we've got a lot of people joining this session. We're super excited to have you here. Um, I am Katie Schultz and I am running this or I'm, I'm introducing some really amazing experts. I was gonna say I'm facilitating this session, but I, they need no facilitation. Um, I will be here just to advance slides essentially, um, but I'm very excited to have as many people um, engaging in this Viticon uh, extravaganza as we have. Um, it's so good to see so many friends um, in this virtual zone. Um, so, I think in just a minute, um, as soon as I stop seeing a whole bunch of numbers ticking up on our participant list, we will launch the session because we've got a lot to cover. Um, and so I don't want us to cut any time short. And maybe with that, we are ready to rock and roll. Um, I see that we've got all of our panelists here. Um, and so I'm just gonna do some quick introductions for people, kind of launch this session off. Um, Justin and Darren, is there anything that you need to say before we get rocking and rolling? All right, onward. Um, all right. So I think everybody, if you've been participating in some of these Viticon sessions before, you know that we'll have a recording for you. Um, we want you all to stay muted so that we can hear the presenters as they're going through their presentations. Um, feel free to chat, uh, put things in the Zoom chat. So you can see that probably at the bottom of your screen, there should be a chat option. Um, you can share your thoughts, um, give kudos to the panelists. I also completely encourage you to use those little Zoom reactions, like give people a round of applause, like get some celebration going here. Um, let people know if you love what they're saying. Um, that's fantastic. It helps the panelists kind of know that what that it's resonating with you. Um, and if you have any technical issues, um, Justin is just such an expert. He's doing so many things right now, but Justin, jchu at prosperitynow.org. Um, like I said, we have a really packed agenda here today. So we are going to hear from TaxLayer, um, Kim and Craig at TaxLayer, um, who have been our fabulous connection points um, with TaxLayer uh, for the last several years. We're also going to hear from Code for America about Get Your Refund and United Way Worldwide um, about My Free Taxes. And we're going to with all of this that we are discussing, um, we are probably going to have time for a brief Q&A. So I'm gonna encourage you all to put your questions in the chat box and we'll kind of be watching that as we go along. Um, so I encourage you all to put things in the chat. Uh, and then we are going to have some breakout rooms. Um, these will probably be a little brief based on the content that we have to share. Um, and then we'll do some wrap up and next steps because you all know you want some bingo words at the end of this, right? Um, so, um, backwards. Okay, so uh, like I said, I'm Katie Schultz. I'm here from Prepare and Prosper to introduce these fabulous people. We've got Kim Manuel here uh, from TaxLayer and Craig Smith from TaxLayer who will present first. We're gonna kick it over to Ray Polarski uh, from Code for America to cover Get Your Refund and then uh, wrap up with Brendan's presentation about my free taxes. So like I said, packed agenda and we are going to toss this over to Craig and going to, Craig, I'm gonna change over the power of this presentation to you in just a second, but I will get you started on your first slide to talk about this, okay? All right, <clears throat> everybody hear me okay? Perfect, see, see a few heads nodding. All righty, so I don't have a lot of time, uh, so I'm gonna kind of dive in a little bit. So obviously, um, if you're in this here now, you, you know Tax Slayer, you probably heard me talk a lot uh, before, but uh, today we're only gonna be talking about our customer portal, which is gonna be a new feature uh, available in 2021. So we're pretty excited to showcase this. Showcase this. We've uh, put it on the blog, several tidbits about it, and we'll, we'll continue to do so. Uh, and we're also about to have the training user guide and video available on the blog as well. So that's coming in the next uh, few days or so. 
So that's going to give you some good visuals as to what to expect with the customer portal. So if you haven't heard about it before, <clears throat> kind of the purpose behind it is it's going to make interactions between the volunteers and the taxpayers a little bit easier uh, when it comes to sharing documents uh, back and forth, uh, signing returns and other uh, 8879 consents um, remotely. So it's going to help a lot with that remote aspect of how your site may operate or if a taxpayer may forget a document here and there when they come in to get their returns prepared, this will be an avenue to help um, share that information back to you at the site without having to schedule another meeting or appointment for the taxpayer to come back in. So I'm just going to advance on here. All right, so <clears throat> customer portal. So kind of with the next award, so that's 2021 is the next award for us. TaxLayer being the partner with Vita TCE. And so every single license out there for pro online users uh, that order the TaxLayer pro online software is going to have access to the customer portal and scan documents. So that's not going to be a, a pilot program where you have to apply for it, so to speak. Everybody's going to get it. And access to those features is going to be uh, determined through security templates dictated by you know, site coordinators um, at your sites. So it's going to be available to everyone, which should be pretty exciting. All right, so let's move on. All right, so how to, as a preparer, how do you actually get into the customer portal? So first things first is you have to at least get through the basic information of that taxpayer's return. So name, social birth date, address, um, that. So once you get into actually the point of putting in income documents, things like that, there's going to be three access points available to create a customer portal for your taxpayer should you need it. And you don't have to do it, you know, as soon as you get through basic information, you can always go back in at a later time into the return and do it at any point. So there's no set point where if you move past it, sorry, you lost the ability to create this customer portal. No, it's always going to be there at any point. So taxpayer name drop down, we got the visuals here, left, nav left navigation bar, and then the submission page and e-file is where you can currently go to access and create a customer portal for a taxpayer. All right, moving on. So you got to create a link. So what it, how it works is, you know, essentially you go to the access point, uh, you go to create the link there, and you have the option to either send an email to the taxpayer or send a text. So if there's no cell phone available or mobile phone for the taxpayer, you're only going to get the email option. Uh, but you put in the phone number, you put in the email address, and you simply click continue, and it's going to shoot off an email onto the next slide to uh, the taxpayer. And it's going to look a little bit like this. So let's move on one more. It's going to come from an address taxstatusnow.com. So that's what you need to relay to your taxpayers and clients of what to look out for uh, if you are going to be creating a customer portal for them. And so what they'll use is a link inside of the email or text to create their own customer portal account. So once you click that link, moving on, it's going to allow them to create a username that needs to be you know, unique to them. Uh, they'll have to put in their email, phone number, last name, and last four of the, tax, the primary taxpayer on, on the return. And because of checks and balances, you know, we don't want anybody just to be able to create a customer portal to have access to this information. So what the preparer has plugged into the return regarding the phone number, last name, and last four, that information needs to match uh, <clears throat> the taxpayer's information. So if all that checks out and they go to click submit there uh, when they're creating their own portal, then they'll be able to get in and onto the next slide, it'll kind of give you a brief um, <clears throat> view of what it's going to look like after you MFA. So it is also protected by MFA for security reasons. So again, if you have a phone number in there, you can get a text versus email. All right. Thanks, Katie. Moving on. So this is what the taxpayer view looks like once you log in, or once they log in, I should say. And it's, it's going to be a good recommendation to tell the taxpayers to maybe favorite this link after they create their account so they can easily get back to it at any point. So there's three main menus here. You can see it in that screenshot on the left side. There's my files, preparer files, and messages. 
Um, so my files is me as the taxpayer. This is what I'm uploading into my customer portal so that it can be shared with the preparer. So, you know, I was sent home or sent back to my house because I forgot a W-2. Prepare creates a customer portal link for me to use to create my own account here. I can then upload my W-2 into my files. And then of course the preparer themselves on their own login can access that document to plug it into their tax return. Uh, from a preparer side of things, you know, they can uh, share documents to the taxpayer. And we're gonna look at that in a little bit later. Then also the messages portion is basically a chat feature between the preparer and the taxpayer so to send messages back forth like, hey, I just shared this for you. Uh, go ahead and sign it, that kind of thing. All right. So, of course, like I mentioned, taxpayers can upload files. I gave you a brief uh, description as to when you may want to do that. And this is just a couple of views as to uh, the process to do so. You know, click upload. You can drag or drop from your computer or workstation. And then it'll let you know that uh, the number of files that you have uploaded. Well, moving to the next slide. And this is what it would look like from the preparer point of view. So um, should the taxpayer upload some documents for the preparer, all the preparer has to do is, you know, log into Tax Air Pro Online using their own credentials. Uh, they hop inside of that tax return. And via the scan documents access is where they're gonna see all these documents uploaded. So this is just a view of what that's going to look like. All right, moving on. And of course, you know, if your taxpayers and clients, they uh, utilize iPads or smartphones, uh, in addition to a laptop or whatever, you can still use those devices to upload uh, documents to the customer portal. And this is the chat view um, from the taxpayer point of view. They can initiate, the preparer can initiate a chat, but it's just a, a way for you to message each other back and forth inside of the customer portal without having to you know, make a phone call or send an outside email, that kind of thing. It just kind of keeps it all housed right here inside of uh, the customer portal. All right, moving on. And of course, this is just the, the view that the tax preparer is gonna see when they're inside of TaxLayer Pro Online. So that left screenshot, it says show chat, it has three unread messages. Uh, so that's what you're going to see when you log in on the main uh, office page of TaxAir Pro Online. It's going to be kind of at the bottom, bottom right of your screen. It's going to be orange like that, so it's very visible. It's going to let you know if you have any unread messages. So once you click that, you can then look at the chat history. And if you have multiple chats going on with multiple taxpayers, it's all going to be housed in that same little window. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, just another option for you to review the chat history. You can always go back and look at everything that's transpired between you and the taxpayer. Uh, so you're not going to lose that after a certain amount of time. And again, to access uh, customer portals, your login as prepared does need to have the appropriate uh, rights assigned based on the security templates. Okay. All right, preparers can make tax documents available for the taxpayer. So this is mostly gonna come in handy after they finish the return, maybe after it's already been quality reviewed and it's ready to be submitted. Uh, on the submission page of e-file, you as a preparer, if you have the appropriate rights, you're gonna see this send tax return documents to customer portal. And it's literally just a click. You just hit that right there and it's gonna transfer the 1040, you know, and everything that comes with that available on the taxpayer side of things. So all they would have to do is log in, again, using their own portal link that you've already sent them, the username they've already created um, to access those documents. They can view them. So let's go ahead and move on. And this is what it would look like from the taxpayer. So if you have any documents available to you, the file name is always going to be kind of funny just because of encryption. So that's an auto-generated file name that gets included uh, into the customer portal there, but you simply click view. And also let me point out before we move on at the top there, you see a blue icon that says click to add signature. So as the taxpayer, that's what you would click to add your signature. And I'll show you that in a second. So let's go ahead and move on. Here we go. So if you click that add signature button, you, you literally use the you know, mouse pad, the mouse in your hand, you know, your finger on your phone or screen to sign your name. So there's nothing fancy. You don't need a, 
uh, any third party software or hardware to get this step done as a taxpayer. So you simply sign your name, you click save, and then when you click sign, it's going to go ahead and apply that signature to all of the appropriate documents on your return. So let's go ahead and move on. And you'll see there as the preparer in the submission page of e-file, you can see that uh, the taxpayer did successfully save their signature because it's going to display on your screen there. And it's going to um, now be displayed on the PDF of the return. So not just the 1040, but also the 8879 and the consents, if there are consents at your site that uh, a taxpayer needs to grant or, or deny. Um, so at this point, since they've already signed, they've saved, it's been applied to the documents. Whenever you share that return back to the taxpayer, it's gonna also include the sig signature as well. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. And that's just a display of what it would look like on the PDF view. And again, I've already mentioned where it's gonna show on the return. And those are just the uh, points right there. All right, moving on. I think that is the end. And so I know Kim has been um, answering a lot of questions in the chat. Kim, you're doing an amazing job. Um, and I think that Kim, I maybe wanted to give you a chance to just pull out a couple of questions that maybe you've seen a couple of times and maybe give them verbally to folks because things are flying through super quickly. Uh, I know people are really interested in this. So Kim, if you wanted to take just like maybe two minutes to answer a couple of questions. Sure. Um, so one of the biggest questions is, is the file size and how does the taxpayer upload it? So the file size is limited to five meg per file. Um, we've been using this in the commercial, the pro side of the house for several years. And the file size limit, file size has never been an issue. Um, so it's five meg and a lot, most of the time they're gonna be taking PNGs or snapshots with their phones and uploading them. Um, so we don't believe that the file size is gonna be an issue. Uh, the other big question is, is about who can correspond with the taxpayer. Currently, the way that works is it's set up so that the tax preparer that initiates, that creates the return um, is the one that is chatting with the taxpayer. We are working on an enhancement that will follow the guidelines, basically, of who can, if I can view all returns, I could could chat with the taxpayers of the returns that I can review, that I can view. Um, it's in the works. We know that that's the big deal. Uh, we just don't know. Um, we're committed to doing it. I just don't know when it'll roll out. I'm not sure if it's gonna roll out for this year or tax layer 2022. We're trying to get it out for 21. So, um, that's really, th those were the some of the, the major questions that I was trying to, to answer through. Thank you. And those are complicated answers. I know that for all of us, it's probably like, what does five megs even mean? We don't even have a concept of that in our heads. Um, and folks, I know that this is like a hot issue and it is an exciting thing for us to be discussing. So I, I will encourage folks to kind of keep an eye on the chat. Um, and Kim and Craig are still here. Um, I might impose upon them to continue answering questions as we go through this, um, but we are going to move along and we are going to hear from Ray at Code for America. Um, Ray, are you all ready and set to go? I am. Thanks, Katie. Ex Excellent. So here we rock. You just give me a nice little friendly next slide or however, and I'm here for you. Sounds good. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Uh, happy to be with you today and happy to have the opportunity to talk a little bit more about Get Your Refund. Huge thanks, first and foremost, to Prosperity Now for hosting this virtual Vitacon, and big thanks to Katie as well for facilitating this session and advancing my slides. Uh, my name is Ray Polarski. I'm the Senior Program Manager on the Tax Benefits Team at Code for America. I onboard, train, and support Vita partners who participate in Get Your Refund, and I will be hopping into the chat after I'm done speaking but I saw a lot of familiar names and faces. So I would encourage any current partners uh, to please feel free to hop in the chat and respond to questions that are coming through that you feel uh, qualified to respond to. So if we can take a look at the next slide, please, Katie. 
A quick overview of Code for America for those who aren't familiar with us. We're a civic tech nonprofit based in San Francisco, working to show that with mindful use of technology, we can improve government in meaningful ways. We build digital services that enhance government capabilities through programs that strengthen the social safety net, promote economic justice through tax benefits, shrink the criminal legal system, and mobilize a national network. And our tax benefits work includes both Get Your Refund and the more recently launched Get CTC, and I'll cover both of those today. We can take a look at the next slide. Perfect. Uh, first, I want to give you a peek behind the curtain at the team supporting Get Your Refund and Get CTC. I get the fun job of talking with all of you and sharing our work, but we have a robust multidisciplinary team, including designers, user researchers, software and security engineers, data scientists, and others working behind the scenes to make the magic happen. If we could take a look at the next slide. In conducting the research that brought us to tax benefits work, we learned that billions of dollars in tax benefits were left on the table each year by eligible low-income families. Our best estimate is $10.5 billion in the earned income tax credit alone. And this is, of course, a huge missed opportunity to advance economic justice. So as a result, our North Star, the thing that guides us in this work, became closing the tax benefits participation gap. We can take a look at the next slide. We do that through uh, a couple of things that we've built, getyourrefund.org and getctc.org. Get Your Refund is online intake and case management tools for virtual and valet vita. They're mobile friendly, English and available in English and Spanish, and the tax returns that are prepared through Get Your Refund are transmitted by, by our VITA partners. And this was built in partnership with IRS Spec and VITA providers across the country. We also have Get CTC, which is an advanced CTC and stimulus signup portal for non-filers, also mobile friendly, also available in English and Spanish, but the tax returns here are prepared and transmitted through Get CTC by Code for America. And this was built in collaboration with the White House and the US Department of Treasury. We can take a look at the next slide. Uh, for our limited time together today, I'm going to focus primarily on Get Your Refund. If we can take a look at the next slide. Get Your Refund is interview based. As I mentioned before, it's mobile friendly. It actually has several service options designed to meet diverse client needs, which we can see on the next slide. Those services include a VITA location finder for folks looking for in-person services, digital valet VITA, digital intake, DIY with help, and service routing. And I'm going to focus uh, right now on digital intake, which is our end-to-end -end virtual VITA option, wherein clients submit documents online, work with a volunteer over the phone while their taxes are prepared, and e-sign once their return is finished and ready to be transmitted. And to give you a more in-depth uh, look at how the digital intake process works, we can move on to the next slide, which shows the virtual flow compared to that of in-person VITA. First, it's important to note that this model was developed with input from VITA partners, and it integrates all IRS requirements for VITA sites, including the intake sheet, consent forms to address section 7216, as well as privacy, confidentiality, and civil rights standards. Also, all communication done with clients is done securely through the system, and that includes phone calls, emails, and texts. So we can go through this together. You see that first the client answers all of the questions in getyourrefund.org, then they securely upload their documents and IDs. At that time, a volunteer, be it an intake specialist or a tax preparer, will review everything that has been uploaded and then call the client to complete the review with them over the phone. At that point, they move the tax return over or the uh, ticket over to the tax preparer, who will then prepare the return in whichever software they use. Then when they're finished preparing the return, they will assign that ticket to a quality reviewer. The quality reviewer conducts a preliminary review of the return in the software and then calls the client to complete that review with them over the phone. The client then signs electronically and the return can be transmitted. Take a look at the next slide. I want to spend the rest of the time that I have with you, which is about a minute and 30 seconds, uh, showing you our custom case management system, which we call the hub. This is where all client data is stored after 
uh, online or uh, valet intake, and it was developed using feedback from VITA providers across the country. Um, so after some shuffling of the screen share, oh, there we go. Let me share my screen here. All right, you should be looking at the hub now. Uh, I have signed in as Pat Prepare, which you can see in the right hand uh, side of the corner or of the screen. Uh, and the landing page is our assigned clients page. So this shows me everyone who has been assigned to me as a user. I can also hop over to the all clients tab, which shows me all of the clients that I have access to in the hub based on my role and the user permissions uh, assigned to that role. So I can see these three clients that I have access to. The filter and search options are the same across the assigned clients and all clients tab. And there's some basic information about the clients displayed in a list form. I can also take a look at the urgent tab, which is all of the clients who have been waiting longer than seven days for assistance and need immediate action. Poor Phoebe here has been waiting for over a month to be uh, corresponded with. Um, so she would be top of my list as I uh, work through uh, client tickets today. I can also hop over to the My Updates tab, which shows me all of the tickets to which I've been assigned, as well as any tickets in which I have been tagged by another user. And on the My Updates tab, I can actually hop directly into the client's ticket, which I will do so that you can see what a client ticket actually looks like. So again, we have tabs here. When I first hop into a ticket, I'm going to start on the client profile, which shows me basic information about the client and their spouse, which I am able to edit as needed. So if the client accidentally mistyped their name, let's say Chenandler Bong, I could actually go into that and change it back to the correct name. I can also hop over to the messages tab and we see here that the client has opted into email only and not text messages. So I'm able to type an email, attach a file and send that to the client. If I scroll up, I can see the entire message history with the client, including automated messages sent by the system and messages that are actually sent by volunteers, as well as the responses from the client. Now I'm going to hop over to the documents tab where I can see all of the documents that have been uploaded by the client. I'm able to edit the documents if I click over on the right hand side. Uh, I'm also able to archive documents and view those documents that I've archived and add any documents that may be necessary, such as their completed return for their e signature. Finally, I can hop over to the notes tab to add any notes for my internal tax team. So if I needed to uh, tell our site coordinator something, I can actually type in the name and tag this person and type in my message. If I scroll up, I can see the full history of notes left by others, either on the team or by the system, including a call log of the calls that have been made through the system. And I will finish by showing you uh, the information at the top. I can see the years that have been requested by the client. I can add tax years here. And then I can also move them through the process by changing their status, which would then give me the option of sending them a template message to go along with that status change. And I will go ahead and uh, go over the last slide that I have here before I turn uh, control back over to Katie. Oh, perfect. Um, so the way that you can partner with us is by uh, visiting our application website, c4a.me slash join dash GYR. You will find a lot of resources, including an FAQ, uh, general information about get your refund, as well as the opportunity to register for live info and Q&A sessions with me if you have any additional questions after today. And with that, I will uh, turn it back over to Katie. Thank you. Right, I know that people have so many questions for you and I know that we, we forced you to do this all really quickly. So I think the real take home is what Ray just finished with is that there is more in-depth information sessions about this amazing tool. And so if you're interested in Get Your Refund, sign up for one of those information sessions and you will be able to get in and learn more about that. Um, and I know, Ray, maybe you can take a look at some of the things that have been 
uh, hopping through the chat. You do have a lot of allies who are helping you out with uh, answering questions there. Um, but we're going to jump over and hear from Brendan. Brendan, are you ready? Are you with us? I, I am ready. Uh, a lot of great information already. Can you hear me OK, Katie? Yes, you sound great. Excellent. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Katie, and thanks Prosperity Now for putting this on. Uh, my name is Brendan Stubbe. I'm the Manager of Community Impact and Economic Mobility with United Way Worldwide, and I manage the My Free Taxes program and product. Um, My Free Taxes uh, is an online tax filing program. We help users file their taxes for free while getting them the assistance that they need. We expand access to VITA services by helping users to either file their return via FSA VITA or connect them if they need more support or want more support to full service virtual and local VITA options. Since 2009, we've helped 1.3 million filers complete their returns via FSA VITA. And for the majority of our history, we were really exclusively focused on that FSA filer journey. And beginning this year in 2021 and moving into the future, we really wanted to adopt a no wrong door program model approach so that everyone who comes to My Free Taxes will still connect them and help them with their FSA VITA. But we don't want folks to stumble into our door, not be able to FSA a return and then get lost and not end up in the VITA family. So we created a user pathway where those users can identify that they need more support and we'll connect them to their full service options as well. So they stay within the VITA community. I'll share more about what that looks like at a later point in this presentation. We, as My Free Taxes, we partner with VITA programs throughout the country and really aim to provide dual benefits. The first is we wanna increase the number of residents in your community and across the country who are able to access VITA services through your programs and through your partnership with My Free Taxes. And we wanna help you increase your grant outcomes. Uh, we provide data both on the FSA returns that are completed through My Free Taxes and the filers who are served by interacting with our platform information and materials. And we, we know that on your VITA grant, those are two big outcomes. We don't receive a VITA grant. So by partnering with us and promoting My Free Taxes, you get to count those outcomes that we achieve thanks to your promotion of My Free Taxes. And since we don't receive that grant, it's not duplicitous at all. It's, that's totally on the up and up with, with IRS spec. Um, I'll share more about how you can get that data later. Oh, next slide, Katie. Thank you. My Free Taxes is available at myfreetaxes.com year round. We operate for the entirety of the e-filing season. So the website will be up year round. And then obviously the software options we connect people to are only available for the duration that those sites are available. So e-filing is available typically late January all the way through October. Users who come to myfreetaxes.com and you're welcome to preview our current user flow by going there now or later today. Uh, they choose how they want to file. Do they want to file themselves? If so, and they're VITA eligible, we'll connect them to TaxLayer FSA and as appropriate, the new GetCTC website. If they want to file themselves, but they're not VITA eligible, we'll connect them to an alternative free software that includes free federal and free state returns. Um, we're not totally finalized on who that will be this upcoming year. It'll probably be the new iteration of Credit Karma Tax which is now owned by Cash App, the Square company. It's all very confusing, uh, but uh, if not then, then it'll be someone else because we really do, again, wanna have that no wrong door program model approach. I want folks to come to our website and if they're not VITA eligible, still send them to have a great user experience. So they tell their friends and family to come to My Free Taxes and some of them are gonna be VITA eligible. So we can increase our, our VITA network impact uh, through this no wrong door program model approach. If users don't feel comfortable DIYing their return or start and decide they want full service help, then they can choose that option and we will give them information and connect them to their virtual and local full service VITA options. We connect people to get your refund, we connect people to the VITA site locator tool, and we connect people to 211 if they want assistance identifying which local VITA program is best going to be able to meet their needs. And as I'm sure you're all familiar, many uh, 211s can do VITA, site, uh, VITA appointment scheduling as well. We have the My Free Taxes helpline available to users uh, year round. Uh, and through that helpline, we have um, IRS certified 211 call specialists who've received advanced VITA certification. 
who can answer people's questions when they're using the My Free Taxes website and can provide guidance while they're using the FSA software. That support is uh, natively provided in both English and Spanish, um, but we can also use language line translation to provide that support in over 120 languages. There's immense uh, filer supports for using My Free Taxes. It's convenient, it includes free federal and free state returns. There's no geographic or age limited limitations. So we really strive to kind of cut through the noise and the confusing process that a lot of folks have to go through when trying to identify the free filing software that they're eligible for and can use. And then again, that no wrong door program model approach. We wanna make sure that everyone accesses the free filing option they need and are eligible to receive. Our website and the software options we connect users to are all mobile friendly. Our website is available in Spanish, excuse me, in English and will be available in Spanish uh, by 2022 um, to provide a full Spanish uh, language user experience uh, on our website and the resources we connect people to. And again, that My Free Taxes helpline during the core filing season, we provide support seven days a week for 12 hours a day. And during the extended filing season, eight hours a day on weekdays, covering both daytime and evening hours. And we should also have text and chatbot support that will launch on time for 2022 as well. For partners, we aim to help you by increasing VITA access in your community year round. If you're a VITA site that doesn't serve, have capacity to serve everybody in your community that's VITA eligible, and if you are not able to provide VITA services year round, My Free Taxes can help you with one or both of those uh, challenges. Um, we can help you provide your VITA services more efficiently, where you can reserve your in-person capacity, which maybe probably is limited, for your priority community members, the target population you really strive to seek. And anybody who's outside that population that has digital skills, you can connect to My Free Taxes and we'll connect them to FSA or again, a different VITA option um, that can meet their needs. Uh, with the example, speaking of that no wrong door program model, I like to call out OC Free Tax Prep because they are one of the top referral places sending people from their website to My Free Taxes. And they created a no wrong door intake for their own VITA program on their own website. Um, and as you see in that picture, if someone clicks that file online now option, just sends them over to My Free Taxes. We take care of them from there. But if they choose their other uh, local VITA intake options, then they retain as a client who's directly served by the OC Free Tax Prep Coalition. So it's a great example of how a VITA program can leverage My Free Taxes to increase VITA access in their community. And then additionally, we want to increase your grant outcomes and help you quantify your impact with funders with that data I keep alluding to. And it's free. There's no obligation. There's no payment costs. Um, it's really easy to partner with us. And I'll describe how to do that on the next slide. To become a partner for My Free Taxes, all you have to do is go to our partner portal. You can write down that URL or go to myfreetaxes.com. And in the bottom left, click the button that'll take you to the partner portal. Register a free account to gain access. That'll take you about a minute to do. Um, that'll gain you access to all of our outreach and promotional materials, some of which are just pre-created flyers and social cards, and some of them that you can customize. And that'll also gain you access to all the data we provide. For a long time, we've provided data about the FSA returns that people file through My Free Taxes, sharing the return count, forms used, refund amount, et cetera, broken down by zip code, city, county, state, and United Way service area, so our partners can see we're promoting my free taxes, how many people from our geographies of concern are actually accessing and using it and take that return data, add it in their VITA grant outcome report. Um, but we're launching a new dashboard for 2022 that'll provide data on all 625,000 annual site visitors to my free taxes. So you can see how they got to our site, where's their location at the city, metro and state level. And we'll break it down by source slash medium that means if you have a website like OC Free Tax Prep where you promote My Free Taxes, you'll be able to see in this dashboard not only how many people from your geography came to our website and got assistance, but from your direct links as well. Um, so trying to give you all the tools and information you need to be iterative and improve your own outreach processes uh, and identify not only how many returns get filed through us, but how many filers get served as well, um, since that's maybe important for, for some of your grants. Next slide. 
Some common FAQs, maybe how do I get started? Um, as I referenced before, go to the partner portal and create an account and you can promote my free taxes whenever it's convenient for you. You can opt in, you can opt out, uh, you can do it really at your leisure. Um, and if you wanna learn more, we'll be doing a My Free Taxes partner webinar in late October. Um, the date is TBD, but the invitation will go to everyone who has a partner portal account. So if you wanna attend that webinar, go create a partner portal account, it'll take you a minute. And that invite to that webinar that'll be in late October will arrive in your inbox. Um, and in that webinar, we'll go a lot deeper into the actual user experience and have a lot longer Q&A um, to answer any questions about the ways that we're refining the user experience and the way that we're getting people from My Free Taxes into the FSA software with a high rate of reliability and with a positive and easy to use user experience. There's two emails on your screen. Both of them end up in my inbox. You can email me from whichever one you want, and I can answer your questions directly. I'll, of course, be here during the uh, discussion time, and I'll catch up in the chat for anything that I missed. Thanks so much, Katie, and thanks all of you for being here. Excited to partner together. Fantastic. Thank you, Brendan. That was so much. You packed a lot into that short period of time. Um, and I think that actually I was kind of pacing along with the chat there. I want you to take a minute and look at that. Um, I think you hit a lot of people's questions in your presentation. Um, but I do want to give um, Ray a chance. Is there anything that you saw in the chat while we were kind of going through Brendan's presentation that you want to call out to the group or anything you want to reiterate because it's come up a few times? I'm seeing a lot of uh, unique questions in the chat. So I, I'm not seeing uh, repeat questions right now. I just want to reiterate that uh, folks can visit our application website for more information to sign up for a much more leisurely uh, hour long info session and uh, Q&A session, as well as to see a more in depth uh, hub demonstration video. I know I went through things uh, really quickly, but there are materials available for folks to learn more. And Brendan, I see you've got um, some things you want to throw out there. I'm excited. Go for it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for letting me steal the mic for a second again. I'm, I'm scrolling through uh, some of the, the questions in the chat. And one that we get a lot is about that data piece. Specifically, how do we allocate data um, based to VITA sites? And that's actually looking at the question a little bit backwards from where the answer comes from. So what we do is we provide the data that we have available um, from our users about where they're located and how many returns got filed. But ultimately, there may be many VITA programs that share a geography and may together promote my free taxes, individually promote my free taxes, or only one of them may promote my free taxes, and we don't have direct insight into that. So uh, the way that you take credit for the my free taxes data in your grant is by communicating with your partners and identifying if anyone else is promoting my free taxes, doing a Google search in your area and seeing if anyone else is promoting my free taxes or if you're the only one. Um, and if you believe you are the only one or, or, or do all or most of the promotion, then you can take credit for all or as much of the returns and filers served that are achieved through my free taxes as you reasonably feel you can justify. Now that is sort of a, a gray area answer, right? You can decide based on your knowledge of your local market and your own efforts, how many of the people from your market you get a claim. But that's something that IRS spec has totally signed off on. We don't have an issue actually where a lot of partners are claiming duplicate clients where suddenly there's twice as many people being claimed in grant outcomes for Chicago as actually we served in Chicago. So it's really been a non issue so far. And, and then we uh, anticipate that to continue to be the case. So I'm always available to consult and help you look at our data and analyze it and make a decision that you're comfortable with. Um, but so far we haven't had any issues. And I will vouch for Ray and Brendan in their email um, speediness. I've never had a problem getting in touch with them. Um, and I think there might be a couple of outstanding tax layer things that we want to wrap up before we head over to breakout rooms. And so Craig, what, what are you seeing over here? <laughs> well, you know, just a lot of things. I, I, I just really wanted to shout out um, the Taxlayer Vita TCE blog. It's uh, vitablog.taxlayerpro.com. 
uh, like I mentioned early in my presentation, you know, I had to go quick and there was a lot of information to cover. But uh, if you're familiar with the blog or you're not, again, it's vitablog.taxlayerpro.com. Go ahead and check it out because we've already released a lot of information about Customer Portal there. And we're going to continue to release even more information so that we can get as much stuff as we can out to all the volunteers uh, out there. And, and I, I did mention as well that we're going to have the actual training video and mini guide up soon as well and available on the blog. So just keep an eye out. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, you can do that as well just by clicking into any blog post. There'll be a subscribe option and that way you get those updates delivered straight to your email. So I just wanted to give a quick uh, reiteration of that before we moved on. So thank you, Katie. Such a valuable tool. I always feel like I have learned something new when I go to the TaxLayer blog, and I also feel like I got a sneak peek into the world of TaxLayer. So thank you for keeping that up, really, both you and Kim Craig. Um, so we are going to jump into um, some quick breakout rooms. Um, and I think most of you have attended other Vitacon sessions, so you kind of know how this works. Um, you are going to get whisked off into a breakout room. And what I, I think within this session, you've learned a million different little things. Um, but a lot of you were probably familiar with at least one of these tools prior to joining this session. Um, so I am gonna just invite you in your small, smaller groups uh, to share what ways you are planning to deliver services in 2022. Um, I know for me as a longtime VITA person, that is one of the things that interests me most because we are all solving the same VITA puzzle in different ways. Um, we're putting together our program slightly differently. So if you just took a few minutes to share what you are doing, I think that you will learn a ton from the other people in your session. Um, and maybe also get, give a shout out to these organizations that we're doing presentations. Are you using Get Your Refund? Do you partner with My Free Taxes? Are you planning to use the client portal? Um, so please, uh, as you get into your breakout rooms, think about what your like 30 second uh, spiel about how your program is delivering services in 2022. I know there's also probably a big question mark for many people. Um, but you are very shortly going to be whisked away. Um, and Justin, I think if we are ready to rock. All right, fairly well, folks. Enjoy your breakouts. Right. I mean, bingo is important, but we have a few things on the docket first. Uh, the first thing is um, we had a few questions in the chat. Uh, about recording. So we will have this recording as well as its associated slides out to uh, all attendees and registrants at Vitacon with uh, probably at the end of next week. Just uh, clean this up, make sure that everything sounds good, is good. Uh, and also if you were like, hey, you know, so-and-so, I wish I got their name and blah, 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 you know, we'll also like we do at normal Vitacons, there'll be a registrant or an attendee list for you to use to access for your records and say like, oh, I wanna really talk about, I uh, really wanna talk to so-and-so um, and all that. In addition, we have a 4.30 PM wellness session. Uh, this session, uh, 4.30 PM Eastern that is, it's with some folks at Peak Wellness. So we, are really excited to have this session. Um, it'll be a great way for us to get away from all of the screens and stuff and really take time to settle into that moment. So I would highly encourage everyone to attend. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put the link in the webinar, uh, link, put the link to the webinar in the chat box. Uh, this link will take you directly to the webinar. So you may uh, want to just make a calendar invite or some sort of notification on either Google Cal, Outlook, whatever calendar software you use, just to make sure that you have this set up for 4.30 p.m. Eastern. It has the link as well as the passcode. Um, so feel free to please check out the chat, copy and paste that directly into uh, the calendar software of your choice. Um, yeah. And once that's, once you get a chance to do that, we'll talk about some serious stuff, which is bingo. Uh, if you have not got a chance to make your bingo card from yesterday, we are still playing the cards from yesterday. Uh, I'll put a link to the, the bingo card generator in the chat. So this is something for you to make a fresh bingo card with, 
but if you have your old card, uh, please try to use that. So we'll be playing these cards uh, even after we get winners. Uh, we'll be playing these cards uh, throughout probably the rest of the day, and we may refresh them uh, tomorrow or we might just play through. So if you have an existing card, be sure to bookmark it, uh, at least for today and tomorrow. And uh, finally, uh, we have more bingo words. Uh, I'm going to read off the three words that we have for new bingo, uh, the new bingo words. And if you get a bingo, feel free to email me. Uh, so shoot me uh, an email at jchu at prosperitynow.org. Um, again, if you get bingo, shoot me that email and uh, send me a link to your completed card. But the actual words uh, are uh, health savings account, so uh, HSAs, TON, another great acronym, and tax roundtable. So those words are health savings accounts. I'm just putting them into an official document, uh, TON, and the tax roundtable. So if you uh, didn't get a chance to hear all those or maybe missed a few words from the last few sessions, I am going to put in the chat right now the list of all 20, 26 words we have called in bingo. Uh, yes, it's Taxpayer Opportunity Network. It should be uh, the full name. But yes, take a look at all 26 words. Pull up, uh, if you get a chance, your word processing document of choice. Uh, and that way you'll be able to read, read through the list and see what words you may have missed uh, from the sessions both today and yesterday. Um, that if you have anything else, uh, please let me know. But we have a great panel coming up in about seven minutes. So it's on national partners. We've had a ton of movement throughout this year uh, with our national partners, unsurprisingly because of COVID, but it's just ton, uh, the Taxpayer Opportunity Network. Uh, yes, I'll put my email in the chat box. I apologize for the loud vacuum cleaner. Uh, yep, here we go. That is my email. And May if I you ask get a question? Yes. About the bingo. Is it a complete card or is it five in a row? It is five in a row. Yes, uh, I've realized that uh, bingo has changed since I was in school. But yes, it is uh, five in a row. Um, it makes things easier. And filling out a whole card sounds hard. Um, so yeah, if you get five in a row, shoot me an email and, uh, yeah, thanks for taking the moment to join us. Um, I'm glad everyone's having a ton of fun with bingo. Uh, I'll let Katie, uh, end the session here if she's got anything for us. Yeah. I just want to say a huge thanks to our panelists for this. It was a fast session. So Craig and Kim, thank you so much for being great partners and sharing that information with us again about the client portal. Um, Ray, you did a wonderful job and folks who are interested in get your refund, get out there and get signed up for one of those info sessions. Brendan, as always, fabulous to hear updates about my free taxes. We're always at the edge of our seat every tax season. So thank you everybody and see you at the next session.